we're going to be continuing with IFR clearance practice, listening to a few clearances to practice writing them down and reading them back correctly. This time, we found some real flights out of Centennial Airport in Denver, Kilo Alpha Papa Alpha, with actual ATC recordings from Live ATC. Our first flight is a Cirrus, November 828 Delta Zulu, departing here for Lamar, Colorado, about 130 miles to the southeast. We'll be getting a full route clearance, no as filed, so get your pen handy. First though, let's use what resources we have to make copying down this clearance as smooth as possible. We'll of course be using our craft mnemonic, standing for clearance limit, route, altitude, frequency, and transponder. Let's fill in the destination airport already to save us time. In the modern era, it's almost unheard of to have a clearance limit that's different than our destination. Is there a departure we can anticipate getting? Let's look at the list in ForeFlight. There are a bunch of departure procedures to choose from. We're in a single engine piston here in the Cirrus, so we won't need a full route departure like the ones marked Jet. It's likely a radar departure, involving an initial heading and radar vectors to the first fix on our route. Radar departures often have generic names matching the airport or city we're in. Here, we have the Denver 2 departure. Let's bring that one up. It shows us a number of VORs that could potentially be where we'll get our vector to our route. This will make it easy to reference when ATC starts calling it out. In addition, it lists a departure frequency in the corner that we might anticipate being assigned as part of our clearance. Let's listen in to the clearance delivery frequency. You could follow along too. The rules are that we won't subtitle the communications, you'll have to use your ears just like on a real flight, and we won't fill in our clearance sheet in real time. We'll let you do that on your own. You could pause the video to practice how you'd read the clearance back, then unpause to see how the real pilot did. Here it comes. Cirrus 828 Delta Zulu Centennial Clearance. Clearance is available. All right, you copy. 828 Delta Zulu. Cirrus H28 Delta Zulu cleared to Lamar Airport via Denver 2 departure. Radar vectors Jeffel join Victor 366. Hugo VOR join Victor 263. Lamar VOR then direct airport. Climb and maintain 8,000. Denver departure frequency 132.75, squawk 5142. How did you do copying it down? Here's what we have. One thing that could have thrown you is that first fix, Jeffel. It's not listed on the departure plate, but you can always ask the controller to spell out the fix. The first VOR, Hugo, is on the plate, so you should be able to reference that. Here comes the readback. Uh, Cirrus 828 Delta Zulu, Zulu clear to Lamar Airport with a, via Denver 2 departure, Jeffo, Victor 386, uh, Hugo VOR, Victor 263, Lamar VOR, and then direct to airport 8000, uh, the frequency 13275, and the squad 5142. How did they do? Did you hear anything wrong with the readback from the pilot? Let's see what the controller says. Cirrus 8 Delta Zulu, after Jeffel, it's Victor 366, rest of Reebok, correct. After Jeffel, it's Victor 366, uh, that's what I got here, uh, 8 Delta Zulu. Cirrus 8 Delta Zulu, Reebok, correct. When you call ground to taxi, tell them you are IFR. Good day. Okay, simple slip of the tongue, but that's what the readbacks are for. That's one down, let's move on to another. Next up is a twin-engine Cessna going to Amarillo, Texas, Hotel 81. Let's put this aircraft's flight plan up to help us out with this readback. That's in your ground. Tesla 1637 Tango, look at the first place. 1637 Tango, Centennial Clearance, you're to the Hotel 81 Airport via the Denver 2 departure. I expect a vector to join your flight plan route as filed. Climb and maintain 8,000. Denver departure is 132.75 and squawk 3727. We got a clearance as filed. We filed via Lufsey, Victor 389, and the Pueblo VOR. So we'll do the Denver 2 departure, 
which will have us maintaining a certain heading on takeoff depending on which runway we take off from, and then expect radar vectors to love see. Ready for the readback? Here it is. Okay, so one six three seven Tango, clear to Hotel eighty one via the Denver two departure. Expect vectors, and then as filed, climb maintain eight thousand. Expect uh, one seven thousand one zero minutes. Departure frequency one three two point seven five three seven two seven for flow. To a test of one six three seven Tango, readback is correct. The only thing the pilot added here that wasn't necessary was an expected altitude. The clearance only mentioned to maintain an initial altitude of 8,000, not to expect higher. The pilot probably used their filed altitude of 17,000 as the expected, even though it hasn't been assigned yet. It might matter in the case of lost comms, but the controller let it slide here. For the last clearance, let's move away from the Denver 2 departure. This one is a citation, headed up to Telluride in the mountains to the west. Let's listen in and be ready to copy. Tail clearance, citation 77 Whiskey Bravo, IFR to tell you right. Dude, 77 Whiskey Bravo, Centennial clearance, uh, looks like a full rear clearance, size ready. Wings 1, Tayru, Herm, ETL. Uh, yep, that's it. Okay, so the pilot pulled a fast one on us. The controller said he had a full route clearance, and the pilot responded back by reciting the route. How did the pilot know the route? Probably by looking it up on public data for the flight, like on FlightAware or something else his company may have given him. We could do the same thing on our clearances to cut down on the guesswork for what route we're going to get. Now, even though the pilot is a step ahead of the game, the controller still needs to issue the full clearance. Here it is. So, we see Bravo, Cliff Clairide, Wings 1, Teru, Herm, uh, I think it's Cones, direct. Maintain 8000, Denver departure 13275, Squawk 5123. And here it is written out. Let's hear the pilot's readback. Bravo to the Telluride, Wings 1, Teru, Herm, uh, Cone, uh, 8000, uh, 300, 10, uh, 132.75, squawk 5123. That's not what you are, Rebecca. Okay, once again, the pilot added an expected altitude that wasn't issued. It looks like a standard practice here at Centennial to not issue expected altitudes with clearances. If I had to wager a guess at why, it would be because of the already high initial altitudes and the need to coordinate higher assignments with the center controller, but it could be something else. So that's our clearance practice for today. Let us know in the comments any specific types of clearances you're interested in. Check out IFR Ground School as well as our other six popular training courses at flight-insight.com.